Okay. okay. <gasps> Thank you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So this is your first podcast, right? Yes. First podcast ever. I'm super excited. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're, you're so welcome. welcome. Okay. Jillian, tell me how you say your last name. Is it Jillian? Yeah, you're good. It's like, it's Salatus. Salatus. Yes. I said it right before. You <laughs> did. Jillian Salatus. I have to say that a couple of times. Jillian Salatus and then your Bellamy skin. Yes. I just have a speech impediment. So sometimes um, you know I what? struggle. You know what? I do too. And yeah. I'm like severely dyslexic. So we're on the same like I know. wavelength I know. here. So I'm, I'm actually very excited <sighs> to talk to you. It's funny because I was talking with, um, I don't know if you follow her, Andrea from Dermaplast. Yes. I started we, following her after she's on the podcast. Right. Yeah. So she's also dyslexic. And I was like, wait, is this like an esthetician thing that we're just dyslex- because <laughs> right. Because I feel like we learn differently than a, yeah. quote unquote, normal people, other people. Yeah. Um, but I feel like that makes us good estheticians because we're good, like tactile with our hands and, yep. you know, we yeah. have other good, we have lots of good skills. We just can't, uh, spell. We have a hard yeah. time learning traditionally. Gosh, right. So bad. So <laughs> I was like a CD student until I went to school for business and then aesthetics. And then I would like did amazing, but yeah, no, I was, I was not good in school. Right. And that's the other thing I think for dyslexic or maybe just a lot of people in general, you're not going to be good in school unless like you really want to do it. And I think even more, that's for, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Even more for us dyslexic people. And I was the same way. I was a CD student, especially like once I got to high school and it wasn't cause I was even, I wasn't trying. It's just cause I couldn't learn traditionally. Yeah. I was the same way. I was like, this doesn't make any like logical sense. And if it doesn't make logical sense, then I don't care to learn it. Like, right. <laughs> so bad, yeah. But you're like, bye bye. <laughs> I'm like, why don't we learn about like taxes and, you know, like, I don't know, there's just so much stuff they don't teach you in school that I think they could better prepare you for life that sure. Yeah. Weird. Well, and that's why I'm excited to have you on today to talk about all the business stuff, because I feel like people, uh, shy away from it. They're afraid of it. They don't know where to start to start. So instead a lot of times estheticians like will avoid it, you know, and I think long-term that hurts a lot of people. So I'm excited to talk to you about, you know, all the ins and outs of, you know, running the business, like the back end stuff. And yeah, I love that you actually went to business school. Yes, I did. Okay. So can you break that down? Like, what is that even like for me? I didn't go to college. I barely graduated high school. Like, tell, <laughs> tell us what going to business school is like. And then did you start a business right after school? Yeah. So I I will just say from the get go, I've known ever since I was seven, I like wanted to have my own business and have multiple businesses. Like it's just been a passion since I was very little. And, um, right after high school, I went to school for business, got a degree, but while I was in school, I had started a business. It was like an online boutique and that actually took over. So I just have my associates in business, but I'll be honest. I find a lot of like with having a business, it's like going through the motions of it. Like, yes, some of this stuff I'm going to go over, I learned in school. And so that gave me like, I guess a little bit of an advantage in some of the, you know, in having different businesses and particularly with this business. But I think a lot of it, you learn as you go along truthfully. It's so true. You really do. You just kind of have to dive in head first and hope you don't crack your head open on the way. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) you having the the background in business and you said you have your associates degree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that does at least it gave you like the knowledge that you needed these things. Again, I think a lot of estheticians like, well, I want to go solo. Um, And they don't even think about it. They just dive into, you know, getting the cutest treatment room and getting all the perfect protocols, which is important. Yes, Hello. Totally. I mean, that's all I talk about. I'm sitting in my cute treatment room right now, you know? Um, but if you want longevity in this career, I think you have to dial that in from the beginning or else you're going to feel like you're drowning. Tell me what you think. Yeah, absolutely. And I always like to give the example. It's like when you're building a house, like you yeah. have two options, you can either build a house on like an unsturdy foundation. And when you do that, you can only build so high before things eventually come tumbling down, or you can build a house on a solid foundation where you can continue to build knowing that everything's secure. And that's what I think of when I think of like setting up the back end of your business, like for longevity, you like hit the nail on the head. If you want longevity, the back end of your business is equally. And if I say not more important than all of the cute glittery stuff, because 
that stuff is fun, but um, this stuff isn't fun, but it's very vitally important that it's set up correctly to make sure you have longevity in your business. And there's a lot that goes in with, with taxes and, you know, God forbid you get audited or, you know, making sure you're saving enough so you can have your doors open the next month. Like that is all vitally important. Mm. Vitally important because all it takes is like one bad thing to go wrong. And like you said, then the house falls apart and you're like, I don't have enough time to pick up the pieces and I don't have enough money to pick up the pieces either. Yes. Um, And I think especially, especially after this last year that we have, have had with COVID, I think now more than ever, that is very obvious that you need to have those things set in place because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely that. And, you know, even along with having just things like your LLC or EIN, you know, and I'm sure we'll dive into this more later, but sole proprietor versus LLC versus corporation and and the advantages to those, but even more so with the business backend is your liability forms that you have your client signing your personal and business um, liability. And, you know, all of that, that kind of comes full circle. Again, it's those things that aren't always fun to set up, but it's, it's really important insurance, you know, all of that. And I know you guys talk a lot about insurance. I think that's so important to talk about. (laughs) It's so it's so important. All it takes is one burn on somebody's face or one pissed off client and you could lose everything. Right. And then if you are not an LLC or like for us, like we're an S corp, we're a corporate, a small business corporation. You are. (laughs) the way to go. Um, it, it is. And, um, okay, let's just dive into this since yeah. we're already getting, like, let's, start explaining. <laughs> let's start explaining because we'll now we give them, we're giving them all these words and letters like, and all these a- letters and numbers. Yeah. Like, where are we? XYZ? I have an yeah. X, XYZ. So let's, you know, before we get too deep into this, cause I feel like Jillian and I could just like jump right into this stuff. Yeah. Um, because I've done everything right and wrong and everything in between where, where, okay. You want to become a solo esthetician or you want to become a business owner and open your own spa. Where do they even start? So there's, there are two different areas you can start. Um, and there's one area I recommend, which is to always advise the professionals. So a business attorney, that's who you want to start, or you can go on the corporation commission of wherever you're living and you go on there and you basically form a sole proprietor or an LLC. And then from there, you're going to legally be required. So basically what that is, it's your business's name. So how I like to explain that is, it's like, my name is Jillian. That's my name. (laughs) My business's name is Bellamy Skin and it's an LLC. Yes. Yes. And I'll dive into why sole versus LLC is like, you need to have an LLC versus a sole proprietorship here in a second. And then from there, once you get that going, you're going to need something that's known as your EIN. So that's your employee identification number. Essentially, that is like your social security number that's attached to your business. It's like, my name's Jillian Slotis. I have social security number attached to my name. My business is LLC is Bellamy Skin. My EIN number is a social security number attached to my business. Yep. That is like pretty standard. Now, if you're going to set it up through the corporation commission, you need to know that you're picking the proper structures, correct? Yeah. Um, If that part of it overwhelms you, and this is what I always advise, especially on my calls, is like sit down with an attorney that specializes in business law and they will set this up for you. Mm. Love Typically that. what I hear is like, it's too expensive. I don't want to sit down with an attorney and we dive into it later too. I keep saying that, but you need right. I don't right? either. I don't either. Net profit you- and growth, <laughs> gross profits different. You need write-offs. So you that do. $900 that you're going to maybe say spend on your attorney setting up your LLC and your EIN is a write-off. And in the long run, it will save you money. So think of it like it costs you up front, but in the long run, it will save you money. All right. It's yes. part of laying that foundation like you're talking about in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And what I hear a lot of too, when I, when I jump on my calls is like, have we set any of this up? And it depends where we're at in our business. But a lot of times what I hear, and I just wanted to like address it real quick is yes, I am. I'm a sole proprietor. And I'm always like, no, no, <laughs> like, no, but that's why they're on the call with you. Right? Yes. Yeah. And so there's a difference. So the main two, um, is like you're a sole proprietorship and then you're an LLC. Those are just different structures for your business. Again, on the corporate 
corporation commission website, when you're doing that, you're picking one of those structures, right? This is why it's important to sit down with an attorney. They will let you know. So the main difference between a sole proprietor and an LLC is a sole proprietor. Your personal and business assets are up for grab. If someone sues you. So that means they can take your house, your car, business, everything. You don't want that. You need to protect your personal assets. So you want to be an LLC limited liability corporate corporation and or company is what that stands for. And they're only your business assets are up for grabs. If you are ever sued. I love that. I love how you explained that so simply, right? Because if someone's coming after you as a sole proprietor and you own a car and a home, they can take all of that. But the LLC or that like for me, the S corp is going to protect that. I do have, I love your suggestion of going to talk with a lawyer. I do have to say for me personally, I'm lucky that my accountant handles all of this. So I just want to like, let people know that there are like, there's lots of people you can talk to. I think what it really is, is just not being afraid to ask those questions and reach out for help. You know, I think, you know, you've had had multiple businesses kind of like new, and I think you just kind of have that personality. You're kind of a go-getter and you're like, not shy to like go out there and ask people questions. But I just want to encourage people that are listening, like, don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to like talk to multiple people because there, someone's going to, someone's going to help you. Someone's going to give you answers and there's no stupid questions. I was just going to, I love that you said that. I was just going to say that a lot of times I find people are fearful to ask because they don't want to sound stupid. And they're like, I already have a business. I should know, but that's not the reality of it. You know, in this industry, we went to school to learn about the skin, not to learn about business. So ask those questions, you know, an attorney, a CPA, so a certified public accountant, or a CFO, certified financial officer. These are all three different people that can help you. And they each kind of specialize in something a little bit different, but they can each really help guide you in your business and in many different assets. And I think some people, they don't even know what questions to ask. So if you're getting in with, you know, your attorney or whoever it is, just ask them, like, tell me what I should know. And tell me what I should be asking you. Yes. And you know what I do for my calls too, is I actually break it down. So when I do the calls, it's like one-on-one solo. It's just like this, it's an hour and a half, but I send like a recap text. And in that recap text, especially in this area, because I find it's overwhelming, I have it broken down. So it's like, this is what you ask your attorney, ABC done. This is what you ask your CPA, ABC done. This is what you ask your CFO, ABC done. That way, it's not overwhelming because it can be. And you know, like what Casey was saying, like sometimes you will have a CPA that is also well-versed in setting up through the corporation commission. Sometimes you won't. So it it just depends, but I like to break it down like that. That way, you know what questions to ask. Otherwise it is, it is overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's why we have you on here. The you, I mean, when we first talked to you, um, you gave us such a detailed list of all the back end. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> if I had had this, you know, 10 years ago, it probably probably would have saved me a lot of like headaches and like stress. Yes. <laughs> because I remember, you know, I didn't get a corporation. I didn't become a corporation. I think until like maybe four or five years ago. So maybe like halfway into me owning my business. And I kept like, it kept, I kept putting it off. Yeah. I kept putting it off and I'm like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to ask. So this is why you're here, Jillian, to share with the esthetician world, like go talk with Jillian. She's going to give you a breakdown of everything and she's going to help you like set you up for success. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yay I love it okay you're so at, now you're an LLC or you're an S corp now what so once you have that done then a lot of times depending on the state you live in if you have a state sales tax you're going to need to look into something called your TPT that's your transactional privilege tax that's the sales tax that you're legally required to pay off of any retail sold out of your space Um, I find a lot of brands now too, like if you are wanting to sign on with, with a different brand, like I just signed with, with Jan Marini, like these things are required, like your LLC, your EIN and your TBT, and there's really no way around it. So that's another reason why having this all set up is, is important. Um, And then once you get your TBT, then from there, you need to look into insurance and I recommend personal and business insurance. It's really important. You have both. And I know you guys, you always recommend ASCP skincare, right? For insurance. Yeah, we, we love ASCP for insurance. They're great. Um, I'll link it in the show notes. And we also have it on our website, glowskincarela.com. It's super 
reasonable. And if you use so our it's link, reasonable. it's like $239 for the year. And it covers, I think up to like a million dollars in loss, which, you know, that's amazing. And it does. And then it's amazing. Can, it, and then you can like go to sleep at night and not be worrying about something horrible happening. Yeah. So that would basically be like your next step. And with that, I recommend personal and business. And if you add on the business, it's anywhere from an extra 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. It just, or I'm sorry, 50 to a hundred dollars, not a hundred thousand, um, extra. That would be a lot. Nobody would be adding it then. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> but it's basically like a liability insurance on your business assets. So gosh forbid there's like a flood or the building burns down or someone breaks in, like you want to make sure that your assets are covered. So I always recommend, um, adding that on too. And that maybe just ups it like 50 to a hundred dollars for the whole year and you're yeah. covered. And that's like, yeah. you know, it's not bad. And again, it's a write-off. Yes. So yeah, all of it's write-off. It's all write-off. So don't think that you're throwing money in the trash. You're not, it's a write-off <laughs> and you are protecting yourself and you are protecting your business so that your house doesn't fall down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> now hopefully they, their LLC got their seller's permit. They had, they're getting out. They got all their insurance. That. Everything's coming together. Um, I love that you have in here, even like where to start as far as like renting a room. Cause I was getting a lot of questions, like, because I don't think a lot of people talk about it. Like, do you rent a room in a salon suite or you could rent a room in a salon or you could open out of your house or you could rent a back room in a cool, I don't know, like art gallery. Like there's so many yeah. options. Like let's dive into some, like how people can find a space to rent because there is traditional ways and there's non-traditional ways. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there, I think number one, there's salon suites. So it's big buildings where it's like, you know, it's a huge building and there's like 40 rooms in the building and you rent out the little space. So that's one option. The second option in that space is to co-lease. So that's actually what my sister and I do. Cause we're both just like you guys. I know <laughs> it's so cute. Together. I love it. <laughs> Sisters in business. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and so you could always co-lease the space too. So if you rotate days or times or whatever it might be, um, otherwise you can look at working in a back of like, you know, a plastic surgeon's office, doctor, dentist, you know, anywhere there could be a room that someone is wanting to rent out hair salon, um, other yeah. spa. There's so many options, right? So many options. And then on top of that, then there's like commercial space. So having like your own space where they walk in and it's like your building. Um, and with that, then you have the option to either rent or purchase the building, just kind of depending on what you're wanting to do. Right. I okay. recommend probably renting. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you got the dough. Good for Unless you, you got like 500,000 laying around. <laughs> Which, hey, someone might. Good for them. Yeah. We're not there yet. Yeah, no. um, <laughs> can you can you tell us what you did? Like when you, because how long have you been practicing as an esthetician now? It's been just a little over two years. And you went straight from esthetician school into working for yourself. Yes. Within like, I got my, I like graduated two months later. I took all my exams passed a month later. I was like in there doing my own thing. <laughs> I love that. Which, you know, I mean, if you know me, you know, I actually don't typically recommend that. But again, I think Jillian, you have had businesses before. Yes. And I think it sounds like by the time you got to esthetician school, you knew you wanted, this is what you were going for. Right. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I like from the moment I walked in, I was like, I will not work for somebody else. I want to do my own thing. Right. And I, you know, I hear a lot of like, oh, I want to work for myself. I want to work for myself in the industry. And I like to go over this, you know, yes. you don't have to work for yourself. No, it's a lot of work. So if you like a challenge and if you can very easily overcome failure and objections and like being able to learn and, um, I don't, I always say kind of be like a little bit of a spastic personality. That sounds bad, <laughs> but to be able to be like, well, uh, all over the place because that's yeah, just how it is running. Hi, business. hi. Have you met me? My name's Casey. I'm a spouse. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then great. I think a lot of owning a business, if I'm going to be honest, it's a personality type. It is. It's absolutely a personality type. So, uh -huh. you know, if, if that, if that to you, you're like, yes, woo, up for the challenge, you know, go for it. If not, yeah. and you're like, that sounds awful, then work for somebody else. There's nothing wrong with working for someone else. No, there's actually like a lot of great things for working for someone So else. many benefits. And that doesn't always mean you have to work for someone for the rest of your life. Yes. You know, that's the cool thing. You can always move on to working for yourself. Um, but going back, so you, you finished 
esthetician school and you basically said, okay, did you go start to go looking for rooms for rent? Did you work in a salon suite? What did you do? Yeah. So actually my sister at the time already was in a salon suite because, um, she went to Penrose, which is school. I went to like five years previous to me. So she already worked in the industry. She already had her own spot. So I moved in with her, That's which great. was, which was nice. It made it easy. Um, and that's kind of like a little bit of a buffer. Were you sharing the space? Yes, we were. Okay. okay and so still I, to this day, we do. We just rotate days in there. That's so great. And I feel like, again, if you're just starting out, if you can find a buddy or a sister oh, or sure. friend, that takes a little bit of the pressure off. And how great that like your sister was already doing this, which I'm sure was helpful for you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then again, going into school, I knew I wanted to have my own thing. So I was working multiple jobs like during school to save up. Cause I get that question a lot. It's like, how on earth do you afford everything in yeah. the beginning? It's so expensive. So for me, it was just like, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I knew the type of money it would take. And so, yeah. you know, it was just a few years of like really grinding. And even my first six months when I opened Bellamy skin, like I held a job in the morning and then I would go in the evening and take clients. So Um, I think, I think that's so important to talk about. Like, let's talk about this for a second, because I think with social media and Instagram, oh, these girls are like book solid and they're just doing facials all day and they're living their best lives, which they probably are. But you don't know that like Jillian was also hustling, like in the morning to make sure she pays her bills before she went into the treatment room. I was the same way. I was waitressing at night, seeing clients during the day to make ends meet because I always had the end goal of working for myself for owning my own business, but I knew it wasn't going to be straight out the gate. Yeah, no, it's, it rarely is, honestly, you know, and I always say everyone comes from different walks of life. So some of us are very blessed and fortunate. We have family or friends, maybe that can support our journey. And that's amazing. Some of us, maybe you're going to have to work a few jobs and that's just the reality of it. And that's okay. You know, or some of us, maybe we're, we're moms and we're super busy and we, we can't work that other job because we're taking care of the kids. And maybe your option is looking at a loan. So there's a lot of options out there. It's, it's doing what fits best for you, but yeah, absolutely. I was the same way. I mean, I worked at a coffee shop, so I was up at three 30 in the morning. I worked till 12 and then from two to eight, I would take clients, get home and do it all over again. And I mean, seven days a week, like uh uh all over again. Uh uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It is dedication and you knew, you knew what you had to do. And you said you did that the first six months until you were like, okay, like I'm making enough money mm-hmm. to like let go of the coffee shop job. Yeah. And I will, when I was in school, I worked for the coffee shop too. Cute. And then after school, six months, but I know a lot of people are always like, how on earth at a coffee shop? It was a fun coffee shop. It was a That's little great. bit different, but you get hourly and tips. So you can't yeah. complain. But- <laughs> You know, we're all about our tips over here. Okay. Yes. You know, tips hourly are really and tips are a must if you're building a business. <laughs> it, it really is. And, and there's those client relationships and you're working the coffee shop for customer service. So you're getting that experience with people. I think that is just so gold. If you haven't worked in customer service before, um, and you just jump right into being an esthetician, you might go, Oh, this is, this is not what I was expecting. Yeah. And it's crazy. Cause a lot of like, a lot of the clients we had at the coffee shop are now clients that come into Bellamy skin. So it's, I'm obsessed yeah. with that. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us a little bit how that worked out? Like, were you going to the coffee shop, like telling people how did this work? No, um, the coffee shop I worked at, we had to like post on social media and stuff when we were there. And so they would tag us and then they would go to my personal account and see I had on my personal account, my business, it like account tagged. Yeah. And so they were going on there and like, oh my gosh, how cool. Like, are you working here to build that up? And then it was just like natural conversation. I would never like mention it unless they brought it up, but, um, I guess just working there and how everything worked. Um, yeah, that's how they were able to find me. And I still have clients to this day that still come in, which is pretty cool. That's so cool. Okay. So that's even, I mean, so you weren't like slanging your cards on the side, but how great that they, you can, if you want, I would have gotten in trouble, but <laughs> right. Again, where you work. Yeah. I think, I think all of this, what we're talking about and just owning a business in general, it's all situational, right? Totally. But don't let a certain situation, um, get in your way, right? Like you're mm-hmm. saying, if you're a busy mom, if you don't have any money or you don't think you have any money, I think if you're, if there's something that you really want, you'll find a way to get it. And it's obvious that you've done that. Yeah, absolutely. There's always a way. 
there's like there's not having like saying no I can't do this it just shouldn't be in anyone's vocabulary it's no how can I do this not I can't do this it's how can I do this right it's how can I do this and then I don't know about you but for me it just becomes an addiction Haley knows it's like yes. well let's just try this figure like let's just out. <laughs> let's figure it out let's Everything figure it out it's figure outable yes that's our Absolutely. favorite saying <laughs> that's our favorite saying okay so They've gotten their, they've gotten their esthetician license. They've got all their things. They're looking for a room to rent. Um, where do we go from here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a lot, but I'd say number one, <laughs> I'm like trying to like simplify it as much yes. as I can. Yes. Number one, we need to get a business account open. You need a business credit card, a business checking and savings, and then your personal and business should not be intermixed. So I'd Thank say that you. is step one. Yes. Whew. If you ever get audited, good luck. No, it's yeah, a nightmare. Good luck. And then for taxes at the end of the year too, like you're going to literally have to like print off and highlight, like it is an absolute mess. And I speak from experience again, having previous businesses. Mm -hmm. So everything needs to be separate, right? So number one, go to your bank, open a business account. You need to have a checking and a savings because you need to be saving for taxes and other emergency expenses that come up. And then you need a business credit card. Then from there, you can download QuickBooks, self-employed. It's super easy. If you're not going to have like a CEO, which is a chief financial officer, someone that does all this for you, right? right? Get QuickBooks, link your business card, your business checking, and then any income that you're receiving in from clients. So whether it's through, you know, Square or Bagaro or however you're taking method of payment, you need to hook that up to Square also. And then everything is categorized in... QuickBooks, I'm sorry, QuickBooks. And then you can go through and just categorize like a business expense. This was me purchasing retail. This was, you know, income from a facial that we are keeping track of it. Right. And, and then from there, you should be paying yourself to your personal account. Yes. And that's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing that I like it to is. hop into. So yeah, in the beginning, sometimes I understand, and I was in the same situation in the beginning, I ran all this self all this stuff myself, except for the attorney, because I wanted that done right. Um, once my business grew, I brought on help to categorize everything because it, it will, it, it is very important. I've and that is a lot over this stuff. <laughs> yes. And you know, when it comes to paying yourself, there's a book that I recommend everyone should read and it's called profit first. It's by like Mike Miskawaski. I can't say his last name, something that's okay. Names, but... We'll link it. <laughs> yeah. Profit first. It's a great book. Um, you know, it's, I think a lot of times when we talk about profit and money, sometimes I think people think, oh, it's selfish. I don't want to take a paycheck or like, they don't like talking about money. Money kind of can make some people uncomfortable. And the re the way I like to think about money is like, if I don't have enough money at a side to pay my own personal expenses and my business expenses, I'm going to let my clients down because I can't pay their rent to keep the studio open next month. Mm. That's how I like to look awesome. at it. Like, not yes. so yeah when it comes to paying yourself there's different ways and there's different legal requirements so like Casey you and I are an S corp so we're legally required to run pay payroll. run payroll yes which is again something that's important to know if you're going to be a corporation which just to get on the corporation real quick once you start yep. hitting about a four thousand dollar a month threshold you need to sit down and probably switch it over um because there's different tax benefits with being an S corp um, so switch it over from, are you saying from an LLC to an S corp? Yeah. Cause with an LLC, it's just like an LLC. So I think of it as like an LLC and then it's an umbrella. So there's mm. like a C corp an S corp sole proprietor partnership that are like umbrellaed underneath an LLC. Okay. So typically what I recommend is once you hit that $4,000 a month threshold of income coming in, you need to sit down with your, an attorney, with your CPA and go, Hey, would it be beneficial if I were an S corp? They'll probably then, say yes. They'll say, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Yes, yes. Yeah. But it's things like that. Like when it comes to paying yourself, you know, if you are going to be an S corp, you're legally required to run payroll. Otherwise, yeah, you can take money and transfer it from your business account into your personal, again, making sure your accounts are separate. Um, I get the question a lot. Well, how much do I save for taxes? How much do I save for personal? How much that is all dependent on your situation. How yeah. much debt do you owe? Yeah. Or what is your total expenses monthly? I know how much is coming in, how much is going out. Um, it, 
it's so, again, it's, it's situational. And I wish we could sit down and give everyone like, yep, you just pay yourself a hundred dollars a week yes. and everything yeah. is fine, but it's not that it's just not that simple. And I think, again, that's where you talk to your accountant or your CPA, or you sit down yourself and run the numbers. And if, if anything, maybe you're paying yourself, you know, the minimum you need for your own personal bills, right? Yes. And if you don't have that much, then you need to think about what you're doing on the back end of your business. You need to cut costs or you need to raise prices, which maybe we get into at some point too. I'm like, I feel like we could talk about this for 5 million hours, even though yes. it's not always the most fun. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, it's, I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. Me too. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's not just like a, a simple equation for paying yourself. No. It's like, what is your overhead cost personal? And then what is your overhead cost business? Yeah, that's a good place. I think that's a great place to start. Yes. Right. What is your overhead? What are you left with? How much can you set aside for taxes? And then how much do you want to pay yourself? Yes. And just start with that. That actually simplifies everything, at least in my brain. Yes. No, I think that's like just a good place to start. And that's typically where I recommend starting. Just like simple, go from there. As your business starts to grow, then it's like, you got to kind of get a handle on it. You want to make sure you're doing everything right. But in the beginning, just simplify it like that. Personal okay, this, business, right, go from right. there. Okay. This might be too personal of a question, but since we're talking okay. about money, at what point of owning your business, did you switch from just the LLC to the S corp where you started running payroll for yourself? Was it, a, was it right away? Or did you wait that like six months after the coffee shop? Or when was so it was once I went in there full time that I started okay. running it as an S corp. Cause originally I was just an LLC and then I had switched it over to an S corp like six months after. Okay. And then when you were the LLC, were you just transferring like a, a certain amount every week? Is that how you I would did do it? it? I would do it like just once a month. Once a I would month just transfer transferred. like right before bills and everything. I would just transfer it over to make sure right. I had enough in there. Yep. Okay. I think even these simple things can like help people like example for like Haley and I, you know, Haley get, makes some money. I make some money. And then we also like, we take bonuses from the business, depending on how much we made that month. We actually just started doing that because our business has changed so much, but I feel like that even might be a good way. Like, okay, take 5%, 2%, whatever you feel comfortable, 10% of whatever your business profited and give yourself a bonus at the end of the month. I like to do that for myself. Yeah. Like, oh, I worked extra hard this month. Like we're going to give ourselves little bonuses. Yeah, so I love that. I think that's such a great idea. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, like I want to do that. <laughs> you should, you should. We just started doing like your own bone. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> give, I'm getting a bonus this month. You know, it's that's like, so yeah, cute. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's also like, I don't know about you, but I always try to like make it a game. How much can I make? Always. How much can I save? Always a game. How much can I save? How much mm -hmm. of a bonus can I get? What am I yes. going to do with that bonus? Are we going on vacation? Like, yeah. am I buying a bigger house? Like, what are we doing? You know, yeah. I, th I think again, what we we're talking about or what you were saying earlier is like, you really do in, in this line of business or really any business, you kind of have to be a self-motivator and Absolutely. these are fun ways to do it. Yes. Yeah, you really that. And I think you really have to know like your overall goal or purpose as to why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. And so, you know, it's like, okay, I want to hit X, Y, and Z by this date. And then I want to do that. And like, if you set those goals and continue to always reach for your goals, I think that is also very helpful too. like setting goals and knowing why you're doing like what you're doing. Yes, I think. And it's okay to have like multiple goals, right? Like, of course, can you share a couple of your own goals that you've made for yourself? Yeah. So <laughs> like, oh my gosh, there's so many. So right now, um, this year I wanted to bring on another line, which I recently did, um, continuing to grow and do more of these trainings, which I've now done. And then Yay. my biggest goal, and I don't know if I'll exactly say what it is. Cause I'm pretty quiet when it comes to, I just okay. like to move in silence, but, um, it's something it's going to take at least maybe three years. Okay. Um, it, it's a lot to kind of set up, but it will be industry related where I'm able to kind of give a place for other solo estheticians to go, if that makes sense. Um, yes. so looking at purchasing and building out that I got the you. Future. I got you. That's awesome. That's my main focus and goal right now outside of like still bringing on products and continued education. And of course these business calls, cause I'm super passionate about it, but that, that is been my, my goal and my 
my biggest, one of my bigger goals. Um, it just takes a few years to get it all up and going. So <laughs> we know all about that. We know all about that. Okay. So I know we kind of like jumped right into everything. Um, when we started recording, <laughs> but like, let's go back. You are offering one-on-one solo training to other estheticians. Can you break down what you're offering, how people can get to you and like how this is going to benefit them? Yeah, of course. So um, I started this training cause I felt like there was a space in the industry, right? There is a lot out there of like social media and, and how to, you know, make X amount of money and how to create graphics and all this stuff, but there's not a lot of the back end. So that's really what this one-on-one soul esthetician business training course is for. It's one-on-one we talk virtually. Um, and then I send you a recap text of everything I go over with you, which is so. insane. You guys, it's a, I'm obs- when Jillian <laughs> no, sent it to me, I'm like, I'm obsessed. <laughs> like, it's so good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. But yeah, it's going over a lot of like the back end, And then really, again, that recap text really breaks it down. Um, and then also understanding the importance of like why you need to have insurance and liability. And then I also dive into how to build a solid clientele to keep you booked. Right. Cause um, that's important too. <laughs> it's also important. So it is a focus on the back end, but I really wanted to give as much as I could out of this training as to how I built my business. So I do include all of that too. So it's how to build like a solid clientele that you're booked for months out three tips and things that you can offer your clientele to have a high retention rate. Um, also social media now on Instagram, I don't teach too much. I teach a conversion. So on Instagram, it's, you have a follower. Now they're a paying client. You have a follower. Now they're a paying client. I don't really do too much, but it's more of a conversion rate of, of what I'm teaching to get you those really full books. Um, yeah. And then I'm trying to think there's so much retailing, like retailing, you kind of touch on, you're, you're touching on everything. Right. But I think it's a heavy focus on setting up the back bend, but back end, but then you're also giving them, you know, tips for success to keep their business running. Right. Yes. Yes. And I think, again, you're such a great example because you were going, you went full time six months into this. So, which is amazing. Um, can you also give like a few tips as far as like building a clientele and keeping a clientele? Yeah, of course. So I'm going to first go over, I think, keeping a clientele, and then yeah. I'll give three, the three tips that I go over on the call. I'll, okay. We'll do that um, on how to have a high retention rate with your clientele, but perfect. Uh, first and foremost, obviously you want to be doing a solid treatment. Your clients want results, right? Yeah. Um, but customer service yeah. is where it's at for me. It is. I just, sometimes I'm like, ah, Okay. Yeah. Customer service is key. If you want people coming in every single month, you got to treat them like royalty, you know, don't let people walk all over you, but really sit down for a second. They could have gone to anyone else and they're choosing to come to you, make it special. And a lot of times, you know, when we're doing our treatment, I say we customize our treatment for a client, right? So we're not using like the same cleanser and toner and serum and peels and all that. And all of our clients, we're using different stuff. I say, customize the whole experience. So from the moment your customer or your client walks in the door till the moment they leave, sit down. Can I get you a water? Can I grab you like a bubbly soda? What can I get you? Are you comfortable? What kind of music do you want to listen to? Would you like me to explain what I'm doing or not doing? Like customize the whole experience. And I think that really will set you apart um, because it's not just about the treatment. Of course, you want to get good results, right? And that's why they're coming to you. But it's really a lot more than just the treatment itself the treatment is like, I would say like 50%. And then the other 50% is like customer service and your space and you and your energy and what you're giving to the client. I mean, yeah, we, I I feel like it's like, we can't talk about this enough, how important that customer service is. Haley and I were actually just on emails talking about some horrible customer service that we're having. And I'm just like, yeah, it irks you to your soul when it's bad. It It does. does. It does. And good it's really good, right? Like everyone's benefiting so much more from it. The customer's happy. You're probably happy. It's just, it's like, it's heaven when the service is good. Yes. And I always, what I always recommend doing too, is for a second stop, you're not the business owner, you're the client. So walk into your space as if you were the client. Do you like the atmosphere? Do you like the ambiance? Would you like the treatment and service? Like 
I think that's really important too, because we can get so caught up in like, we're the provider and blah, blah, blah. It's like, take a second and stop. And then also think of too, like when you walk in somewhere. So if you were to walk in to get a facial or you're walking in to get a coffee or you're walking in to like a yoga class, I don't know. Like, what would you expect? Are you going to want to be greeted? Like implement all of that into your service too. Yes. I think it's so important to always put yourself in the customer's shoes. And also it's the same thing with business, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, just put yourself on the other side, like flip it and go, okay, does my, would I want to, like you said, would I want to get a facial here? You know, am I giving all of my energy to this client? Because I can tell if my esthetician or my hairstylist is distracted. So it's like, you know, you know, when you've had a bad experience, make sure you're not doing that for your clients in the treatment room. Yeah, absolutely. And then three tips that I would give for like high retention rate for your clients. Mm -hmm. Um, Number one, you want to offer, and I'm pretty sure you guys have gone over this. I think it was like your first podcast or your first podcast on skin in the city. I think yeah. it was the first one. So I'm going to go over it too. Cause I like to go over this, but let's go over it. the three things that you need to be offering to all of your clients. So when you get a new client, you let them know about these three things. You communicate it through them through text and email. Cause you should have their information through your booking system. And then also on any social media platforms. Um, but number one is a loyalty program. Yes. So, and you can create it however you'd like. I do little stamp cards also on my booking app. It tracks all of their appointments, but I basically say after your 10th treatment, you get to pick out whatever service you want with me for free. Yep. The reason I do that, they've come to me 10 times. They've come to me for almost a year. They're probably hooked. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause some people might go, oh, I don't want to give away a free service, but I'm like, girl, they have big been for 10, at least a thousand dollars, if not more hook, hook them up, you know, and that absolutely. And I give the example, like if you're to walk into a coffee shop, say after 10 coffees, you get one free. The other one offers nothing. The service is the same level customer service. And also the taste of the coffee is the same. Where are you more inclined to go? I want that free coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Who doesn't want free coffee? And like, who doesn't like, it reminds me of like, was I think when I was a kid, I'm like, where did I have like loyalty point cards? Was it like Claire's? Yeah. And they'd stamp (laughs) it. And I'd be like, Ooh, I just need to buy one more set of earrings. And like, then I'm getting that $10 off or that free set of earrings. It's like, that gets your clients excited. And to us, it might seem so simple or so silly, but those little, those little details so are, fun, they're so fun. Yeah. yeah. It makes such a difference. Yeah. So yeah. Loyalty program for sure. Yes. The second thing is a referral program. Yes. I think this is so important. Reward your clients for doing free marketing for you, essentially. Heck yeah. Um, what I do is I say with each referral that you send in, you get $10 off the next treatment of your choice, how I'm tracking that. Cause that's a question I get a lot on the calls, how I'm tracking that is anytime you have a new customer or client, you always ask them, how did you hear about me? That is like the, one of the first few questions, like, welcome in, what can I get you? I'm so excited. How'd you hear about me? Um, because then I'm knowing where the referrals are coming from. Then I'm just creating that note in their client profile, which I use my booking app. And then I reach out to whoever sent them in like, Hey, Jessica, thanks so much for sending Nicole in. You get $10 off your next treatment. And like that, and for, for you, like for a solo esthetician, that doesn't take that much time and that can literally fill your books. And that's the quickest way you will fill your books. Heck yeah. Word I, of I, mouth. Word of mouth, which sounds so funny. And you know, I've talked about this before, but it's like, even though we're in 2021 and social media is social media, I feel like referral and word of mouth is still where it at, where it's at when it comes to like those long-term loyal clients. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. It's so important. It's so important. Okay. So we got loyalty program. We got referrals. Yeah. And then the third thing I recommend is doing monthly exclusives. Yes. So, um, what I recommend doing, and I'll be honest because my books are the way they are. I don't do this anymore because this was really to just like get my book super full. Yeah. Now that they're at that point, I don't offer this now, but if you're trying to fill your books, you know, this is what I recommend doing. Um, you don't, don't discount your work. So I want to be really clear. This is not 50% off everything, 50% off free for free. No, (laughs) we're running a business. No, (laughs) that's not what we're doing. It's an exclusive. So I always say like play off like the theme of the month. So if it's like Valentine's day, do like a sweetheart facial and it's like exclusive this month only you can book this, this facial. 
Or if you are going to throw in anything, throw in like a free lip mask at the end of any microneedling treatments you book, you know, get creative with get it. Creative. Yeah. I have, you know, one that actually worked really well with me, which I don't know if I, I'll just say it. Cause this to me just like blows my mind, but it was, it worked really well is okay. I have a little hydrofacial machine, the hydro exfoliator yeah. and I have it. I'll do that always with a hydro jelly mask. I don't like to do it alone. So I'll do that with a hydro jelly mask. It's the same price, but during the holidays I'd throw on like for 4th of July, like glitter stars or like for Valentine's day, like hearts. And my clients uh-huh. would be so excited to get like the new one each month to post to their Instagram, like things like that. Like genius though, just have fun with it. It's so fun. Yeah. Right. I mean, we used to do that too. You know, when I was running a full spa, um, and I would just give one suggestion further, at least for me, like once I got my books full, of course, then I hired other estheticians. If you guys know me, you've been following me for a long time. So then I was doing the same thing for my other estheticians to grow their business. And like Jillian saying, you don't have to actually discount the service, but you make it a special. This is me with my quotes. You make it a special, you add in a little extra something and maybe you change charge the same price, or maybe you even charge a little bit more, but people are going to book it because they want that jelly mask with the glittery hearts on it for their Instagram. And then I'm sure you want the hearts. (laughs) And then boom, they're posting on Instagram. That is free advertisement. So just all feeding itself. Yeah. 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 Create like that buzz, like this month only or exclusive only. And the example I like to give on my calls too, it's actually another esthetician. She was in your guys's magazine, Alyssa. She's or I, Alyssa. Yeah. 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 You guys have a collab with her today or yeah. tomorrow, right? Yeah. 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 She is smart. She's very, very smart. And I always like to go, I, if you want a good example, follow what Alyssa does because she does. My store is open this three days uh-huh. and it creates One's going to rush on there and buy it. It's going to be sold out. Yeah. It's kind of, think of it like the same thing with these monthly exclusives. Mm -hmm. It's like only for a short amount of time, only this month, you either get in or you lose out. You're not going to get the treatment if you don't book it's this month. It's it's honestly genius marketing and I'm marketing obsessed. I'm also obsessed with the Kardashians. Me too. And okay. I I was like, I know. I'm like, we like the same things, Jillian. I "I love the Kardashians. No shame. I literally have this book right here with other faces (laughs) That's so wait, that's so good. It's like I didn't even know it's great. That's no. such a cute book. Oh, so does it have cute. like just Kim's face or does it have other faces? No, it's too? barely keeping up. It has all of them, like Kim, yes. Chloe, Courtney. Oh my god, I need one of those. TJ Maxx. <laughs> okay, Haley, we need those. <laughs> yeah, I'm adding it to the TJ Maxx run. <laughs> okay. Um, and I always okay, here's just a little tip for me. I I'm always looking at people's businesses and like seeing how they're marketing. Right. And the, all the Kardashians, they, there's 10 million brands. Right. And it's always like, it's so genius. It's always like exclusive. Like you have to get it and then it sells out. And then you're like, shit, I wanted that. So then you have to like, you have to get it the day it launches. And there's like this sense of like urgency for your like customers and your clients. Um, to get it because you know, like, oh shit, if I don't get the new skims drop, like I'm not getting that new thong that I wanted or whatever it is. You know what I mean? But absolutely. And that's just a tip for me is to, if there's brands that you like that you personally are like scammering to get whatever they they're selling, take take a step back, take notes and look at it from a business perspective instead of from the client perspective and see what they're doing and try and implement that into your own business. Just like what Alyssa is doing, um, where it's like this, like we're doing the wash your face collab. It's so cute. It thinks, isn't it? So I want to get it. Cause I'm like, it's exclusive. Only you got to get it. You got to get it. Right? <laughs> I have to get it. I'm like, hopefully it's not sold out. I don't know. It's sold out. So the, you know, so, you know, Alyssa has our store open from Friday to Monday. We did like a longer one since this is like a one-time exclusive and it's like, if you don't get it in those four days, like it's gone. Yeah. And that's gone forever. You've missed out gone forever. (laughs) So, you know, if you want that sparkly heart, you know, hydrofacial with the hydro jelly mask for Valentine's day, like you got to get in and get it with Jillian. And these are just such great uh, you know, marketing tactics and they really aren't that difficult. No, no. It's just getting a little creative with it. So a lot of times I find people kind of like stumped. They're like, well, I don't know what to do for like my specials. And I recommend just do a few different ones a month, but kind of play off of like the holiday or what's going on and yeah, just kind of get creative, like have fun with it, you know? Yeah. I mean, Haley and I used to sit down every month and go, okay, what do we want the special to be? Or it was even like, what do we have a lot of? 
Exactly. Yeah. Do I have a lot of cranberry mask right now? And I want to use it all up number one, cause I love it. And number two, cause I don't want it to go bad. Like if you have overstock of something like get creative with it, or it's like, sometimes we look, Oh, we have all these lip masks and people really haven't been buying them. So like, let's give it as a freebie, you know, yeah. like you're saying, get, get creative, have fun. Um, and I think also tell me what you think about this. Like if you can't think of like five different specials, like start with one special a month and just make it simple for yourself and for your clients. Yeah. I think that's perfect. If doing more than one overwhelms you just start with one. And then as you move forward, then you maybe add on more. Or if you just love having one, then just, just do the one, but 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 do something every month, do something and then switch it up every month. There's the new special, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But you do those three things and they're, they're coming back. Okay. So let's repeat it one more time. Cause we got off track on the Kardashian. Oh no, no, you're, then, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> tell it, tell us what they are again. Yeah. So three things to offer your clients for high retention rate is a loyalty program, a referral program, and then monthly exclusives this month only love. I mean, those are like my three like core things. So I love that you're sharing that as well. Yeah. Any- so important. Yeah. And they'll always so- come back in that good customer service. You're doing a good treatment. Yeah. You're, you're, spe- you're customizing, not just the treatment itself, but the whole experience. And like, they really have nowhere else to go because you're offering them everything. Yeah. And I always like to say, if you can offer them everything, you will stand out because very few offer a few things, but very little offer everything. everything. So if you can offer everything that will set you apart within itself. It's true. So if you're wondering why you're having a hard time building a clientele, make sure you're checking all of these things off your list. But the first thing you should do is all the back end business stuff. Yes. (laughs) Please save. Please, because there's been many years where I've been very nervous and cried a lot and somehow survived. And I think we all feel anxiety over taxes. And then as estheticians and, you know, small business owners, there's just like a heightened layer of like, how much are they going to charge me? And is this going to wipe me out? So yeah, make sure that you are saving Absolutely. and you're not just buying all the new skims drops and yes. you don't have any money left over. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> save. I always say like live and save if you can, as conservatively as you can, especially not always. Right. But I, I'm a little bit like that, but like kind of not really uh, in some areas I am, Yeah, but you know, you work hard and you've gotten to a point where like, you can also like spend your money, which yes. is recently. And I'll recently. be honest recently, it has been two years. So in the beginning, I was very conservative, saving as much as I could. Like coffee was the only thing I was paying full price. And then everything on my back bar, like that was really it. <laughs> everything else I was like, ah, oh, getting deals. But, um, yeah, in the beginning, you know, save and tuck as much as you can conservatively that way, then that gives you obviously so you can pay your taxes, but then when you do save or can save a little bit more conservatively, it gives you other options. So yeah. like when you want to bring on a new line, or if you want to do a collab or launch with someone or do the cold roller, you know, collab, then you have the extra money to do so. So yeah. also saving conservatively gives you more options. So many more options and flexibility, and you can use your creativity in so many different ways. Or, right, like you said, if something does come up, you're like, Oh, I really want to add this new line. Hopefully, you have a little, you know, money saved up. So, you're like, Okay, I can, you know, invest, invest into my business. And I think continuing to invest in your business is so important to keep up with the times, to stay relevant, and it keeps you and your clients excited as well. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else that you want to share with the audience? I feel like we covered a lot of good stuff. I feel like we could t- talk for another hour though. I know <laughs> there's so much there is, um, you know, I'd say, I just say one of my favorite quotes throughout life and just and everything. So I'll just throw out this quote. Okay. It's, it's a uh, feel the fear and do it anyways. So I love that. a lot of times, you know, when you're wanting to go solo or you are solo, it can be really scary. You just got to push through it. Um, you will get there and use the right utilize. I would say, I want people around me that know a lot more than I know. Yeah. Util- and that's why I recommend, you know, attorneys, CPA, CFOs, they know a lot more than I know. Utilize these people. No question is dumb. Utilize them to help you with your business to make sure that you do have the back end set up right. And everything's good again. So we can build that like strong foundation on the house versus like a Rocky foundation. I love that. I think that's so important 
it, you're going to be afraid. You're going to want to cry. You're going to want to throw up, but just keep doing it. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs owning your own business. Um, but if you yeah. have the right personality for it, I think it's absolutely amazing. And I think it's so, I don't, it's, it's satisfying. Yeah. I love it. It's rewarding. It is super rewarding. It's very rewarding. I say, I love the chaos. I love that. Like every day, <laughs> A little bit it is, but I love that every day it's something like different. There's a new challenge. Um, I love that about having and owning a business. And that's why I own my business because I love the daily challenges and or obstacles. And it's also very rewarding too. It's so rewarding. Yeah. You, you kind of have to be a little bit of a spaz. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Organized chaos. That's how I am. It's all here. If anyone had to take over for me, they'd be like, what? But I'm like, it's all organized. You got it, girl. You did it. It's all. Yeah. Just keep it all in your head. Sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night. Like, oh, I have to order more of that. And then I'll get online and order it. And then I go back just like, it's so bad. Oh my God. Yeah. But that's like the story of a business owner. Trust me. I have like a notepad by the side of my bed and the same thing. Sometimes, you know, it's like, you're just drifting off. Oh, I have an idea. I need to write it down and then I go back Mm -hmm. to sleep. Or sometimes I'm editing my whole website at 3 a.m. because I can't go back to sleep until I do it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's so how it is. <laughs> it's a it's a challenge. It's rewarding. It's all of those things. Um, but if you're thinking about doing it, first off, I say go for it. And then second off, I say call Jillian. So can you tell everyone where to find you on Instagram, where they can um, maybe ask you some more questions and where they can sign up to do the one-on-one virtual training? Yeah, of course. So on Instagram, it's just Bellamy skin. Um, So it's B-E-L-L-E-A-M-E underscore skin, S-K-I-N. On there, you can direct message me or you can click on the link in bio. And I use Linktree. I've been using that for years. I love it. You can just, you'll see um, one-on-one soul business training course, you click book directly on that. Um, otherwise you can always email me. I have a business email now. Good job. <laughs> yay. yay! You know, yay. So it's just Bellamy skin and then just the number one at gmail.com. Um, yeah. So either one of those, um, okay. I'm also on TikTok. I'll be honest, I'm not the best with keeping up on TikTok. But yeah, it's hard. Bellamy skin on TikTok, um, but There's... really more so Instagram. Um, and then on Vagaro, that's where you can book the classes or click on the link, but it's just Vagaro.com forward slash Bellamy skin. So, and that's kind of what I use as my website right now. That's, that's when great. it works, but yeah. One thing at a time, one yes. thing at a time you, in some ways, I mean, even though you've had multiple businesses and you're doing amazing and congratulations, like you're still a baby business two years, you know, but I feel like once you make it past the two year mark, it's like, okay, game yeah. on, you know, my thing was like, I just want my books to be slam packed. Mm-hmm. And then once that is done, then I'm going to kind of shift gears onto like the webs and all of that stuff. So yeah. that's kind of where where I'm at, but that stuff is good to have from the get-go too. I'll, you know, all it of is, that is important too. <laughs> it is, it is important, but I think, you know, you using Vigaro as like your quote unquote website. I mean, I suggest a lot of solo estheticians to do that because again, you put, we put so much pressure on ourselves. We have to have this like huge, crazy website. It's like, no, you can just do something simple that your booking system already has in place for you. And that also is going to save you money. Yes. Yeah. And it's nice because on there they can leave reviews, they can view services, gift cards. So even though it's not like a really cute website, it is kind of like a baby website and it's a great place to start. I think it's a a wonderful place to start. And then um, I'm just going to remind everyone again, you are offering the one-on-one solo SD training and you're doing it like once a month now, or you're doing twice a month. So I'm doing it now twice a month. I was doing it just once a month. And then I just run the calls all day. Um, but now I'm offering it twice a month. Um, and so, yeah, right now I have for the next like two months that you're able, I do about two months at a time that I'll block it out that you're able to book. So you can just go, if it's, you know, on Instagram, Bellamy skin, click on the link in bio, and then you'll see in there it's on link tree one-on-one soul esthetician business training calls, click on that or just direct message me. Cool. Love it. You guys, it's easy to find her. Also make sure if you haven't read the spring issue of skin in the city to, buy it, read it, read Jillian's article. And, uh, thank you so much for being here for being, you. you know, in the magazine. I think this is hopefully going to bring a lot of value to everyone who's listening and answer a lot of questions that we're getting on the reg. So I appreciate, I hope so, I th- hope so too. I think so. So <laughs> we appreciate, 
for sure. Yeah, I think I learned some things too. So, you know, it's like, you can never stop learning. Yes. Um, thank you again so much. This was fun. We should thank definitely you. have you back on again and keep yes. talking more biz. Yes, I would love to. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> have a great day. Bye Casey and Thanks. Haley. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Bye.